One of the very first Act 2 missions B is given after becoming entangled with the relic is called Fool on the Hill. It tasks you with tracking down and scanning 20 graffiti marks across Night City. It's your classic case of a collection mission that you would see in most open world games. But did you know that these tarot cards tend to have a deeper meaning than just their cyberpunk aesthetic? They actually foreshadow the events of the game. In today's video, I will not only be going over where each of the 22 tarot cards can be found, but also discuss their meanings outside of the game, in real life, and their deeper meaning within the game. Come on, you didn't think that they were just fancy art pieces, did you? So, for those who are interested in the occult, you may have realized that the tarot cards found in Cyberpunk are Cyberpunk renditions of the tarot cards that you'd find in a deck of the Major Arcana. The Major Arcana are the 22 named cards that a mystic would use to read your fortune. You know, like the Fool or the Lovers. For full clarity, Cyberpunk 2077's DLC also added 4 cards from the Minor Arcana. These are the King cards of each suit. The King of Cups, King of Pentacles, King of Wands, and King of Swords. But this video won't cover those. Anyway, for those who are not too familiar with tarot cards, like myself before writing and researching for this video, I've got you covered too. In its most plain sense, tarot is just a pack of playing cards. Originating in Italy, tarocchi, as it was called, swept across 15th century Europe, evolving into a wide host of other more localized games and formats as the years passed. Germany played a three-player card game called Gruterock, and the French played French Tarot, a four-player trick-taking game. You get the idea. It was just a deck of cards with a wide variety of games that Europeans played. It wasn't until the late 18th century that they took on a more supernatural nature. French occultists made claims about the origins of these cards and their significance in history. They stated that these decks of cards were derived from the Book of Thoth, the name given to the many texts that were supposedly written by Thoth, the ancient Egyptian god of writing and knowledge. Since then, a special portion of the tarot deck, called the Major Arcana, has been used by mystics and psychics to read the fortune of individuals. Is it all mumbo jumbo? Maybe, but I won't yuck your yum if you're into mysticism. After all, I like to believe in ghosts, so what's the difference, you know? Anyway, now that we have some more context for what tarot cards really are, and where they came from, let's get into it. The Fool One of the first tarot cards you'll encounter is The Fool. It can be found just outside of V's starting apartment. The graffiti depicts a punk in a yellow jacket, about to unknowingly take a step off the side of a building. A malnourished dog is by his side. The journal entry for the Fool card reads, The Fool is everyone, including you and me. Each step he takes on his journey feels like stepping into a brave new world. Ultimately, the journey will change him, but as the card shows, he's a trustworthy lad whose tireless hope drives him towards his goal. In Tarot, the Fool is number zero of the Major Arcana. In the Rider Waite Tarot deck, maybe the most popular deck of tarot cards, the image for the Fool is quite similar to that of Cyberpunk's. It depicts a man looking to the sky, ready to take the next step off a cliff. A dog is by his side. In fortune tellings, the fool typically represents unlimited potential, new beginnings, or a journey. You're taking a leap of faith into the unknown, but it's not a dangerous one, rather one that could lead anywhere. The universe is extending an invitation for adventure. It's the fool on the hill. It's not something that I would have thought of myself. I'd figure the fool would represent foolishness, but it doesn't. You're not a fool because you're making a mistake or acting stupid. Rather, you're a fool because you're ready to take future challenges and risks head on. 
abandoning worries and just taking a new step forward. It's kind of inspiring. As for its meaning in the cyberpunk game, it's pretty much the same. As it can be found outside of V's apartment, the place where she starts Act 2 and the entirety of Night City becomes available to the player, the Fool represents a new beginning. As each playthrough allows the player to make different choices, just like the tarot interpretation, they're provided with endless possibilities in an open world. The Fool is V, and notably their journey. V is the Fool on the Hill. It makes sense. The Magician The next card in the Rider Waite tarot deck is the Magician. It is also known as the Juggler, the Magus, or Illness in other decks. In Cyberpunk, it can be found near Lizzie's Bar. The graffiti shows a faceless punk in a gold jacket. Behind them are disembodied faces, and in front of them are a series of blades on a table. A cup with a five-pointed star is also seen on the table. These images actually represent the card suits in the Rider Waite deck, with the minor arcana cards having cups, swords, pentacles, and wands as the four card suits. Ironically, the Magician Graffiti doesn't appear to have the wand suit represented. The Cyberpunk Journal entry reads, The Magician is the card of self-confidence and adapting to situations through intellect and sheer will. The Magician is a schemer who always has one last trick up his sleeve, who despite everything manages to stay afloat and remain in control of his own destiny. In Tarot, the Magician is numbered 1. It's often depicted with one hand pointing towards the sky and the other pointing to the ground. This is interpreted as the magician is making reference to both the spiritual world, pointing up, and the physical world, pointing down. In front of him are the four suits of the minor arcana, a wand, a pentacle, a sword, and a cup. In his hand is a double-ended white wand, supposedly representing the magician's status as the conduit between the physical and spiritual world. His robe is white, representing purity and inexperience. An infinity symbol is above the magician's head. It's quite the complex card. As for fortune-telling and divination, the magician is often associated with energy, unending potential, and the manifestation of one's desires. Does it sound sort of familiar? Good, because the magician is quite often associated alongside the fool, as the magician comes directly after it. The magician shows that all the tools needed to attain your goals, the four suits, are within reach. You just need to harness your potential and get it done. In Cyberpunk, the card varies slightly. The magician is not pointing to the sky or the ground, but rather they have their hands in their pockets. Right next to their hands, on their undershirt, is the infinity symbol. I think there's some deeper meaning to this. Unlike the Rider Waite tarot, Cyberpunk's magician is not bridging the physical or spiritual world. The infinity likely refers to eternity, an eternal existence. And because of this, I think Cyberpunk's magician represents Johnny Silverhand. Johnny doesn't have a physical or spiritual existence explaining why the magician doesn't point to the sky or the ground. Rather, the remnants of Johnny's consciousness lives on eternally within the relic. The cyberpunk journal entry also describes Johnny quite well, a self-confident man who, despite the odds, always manages to remain in control of his own destiny. Johnny, despite physically dying in 2023, has managed to maintain some form of existence. Depending on the ending you choose, Johnny's story and destiny is shaped by the combined actions of him and V. And speaking of Johnny and V, remember what I said about the Fool and the Magician often being associated together? Well, if V's journey is represented by the Fool, then it makes some sense for Johnny's to be represented by the Magician. After doing all this research, the Magician really seems like one of the more profound, and complicated cards in the Major Arcana. Cyberpunk's Magician is no different. The High Priestess The number 2 tarot card in the Rider Waite deck is the High Priestess, 
It can be found at Takamura's hideout during the search and destroy quest. The graffiti shows a white robed figure in what appears to be a T pose. They have a three pronged hat, and flanking either side of the priestess are two pillars with the letters B and J. The cyberpunk journal entry for the High Priestess reads, The High Priestess is a card of mystery. It shows how all of our secrets hang by a delicate thread and the struggle between common sense and intuition. The High Priestess symbolizes the cold, calm waters, as well as the mysteries hidden in their depths. The Rider weight depiction of the High Priestess is essentially the same. White robe, horned hat, and the B and J pillars. In tarot readings, the High Priestess is often associated with mystery, secrets, femininity, and uncertainty of the future. I think that the High Priestess represents Hanako Arasaka as it's found in the area where you first speak with her. Hanako fits the reading quite nicely. She's a mysterious woman whose motives are only really known to her. She is the female heir to the Arasaka Empire, and her fate and future is tied to the actions of V, ranging from death to securing leadership of the Arasaka Corporation. Quite the bit of uncertainty there, eh? The Empress The number three card is the Empress. It can be found near the afterlife when V first meets Rogue. The graffiti shows a white-haired woman in blue, standing with her eyes closed. She holds a katana in her hand, and the symbol for the female gender is on the side of her jacket. Parts of the foreground and background have been filled with flower imagery, and two towers can be seen in the back. The in-game journal entry reads, The Empress is the card of femininity and motherhood. She is authoritative, knows what she wants, and exhibits refinement and sensuousness. The Empress symbolizes creativity and growth, and instructs us not to dismiss our unconscious impulses, but to trust our intuition. In the Rider Waite deck, the Empress is quite a bit different. While some themes remain the same, the posing is entirely different. Rider Waite's card shows a blonde-haired woman wearing a 12-starred crown, wielding a scepter. Her dress is white, with a floral design, and she sits in a field of grain. The symbol for the female gender can be seen next to her. Most often in tarot readings, the empress represents motherhood, femininity, and the creation of life, nature, and nurturing. Within the game, I think the empress is supposed to represent rogue. It's found at her nightclub, The Afterlife. One of her nicknames in Night City is Queen of the Afterlife. That's not too far off from Empress. It's also revealed in the For Whom the Bell Tolls quest near the end of the game that Rogue has a son. That literally fulfills the motherhood role. On a slightly different note, while quite rebellious herself, Rogue does act as a sort of motherly figure for many of Night City's solos and mercs. She takes them in and provides them safety while at the afterlife. She's motherly in that sense. The Emperor. Numbered 4 in the Rider Weight deck is the Emperor. It is found near Kinpeki Plaza. The graffiti is quite creepy. It shows a robed figure hooked up to a bunch of wires and electronics that appear to make up a throne like chair that the figure is sitting on. The figure's head is turned to face the viewer, its red eyes offering a blank stare. The darker image of the figure and computer is contrasted with the bright yellow background. The in-game journal entry reads, The Emperor represents patriarchal control and is pleased with the authority and power he possesses to shape the future. The Emperor makes the rules and enforces them for the common good. But prestige has its dark sides. The Emperor is dominating and ruthless and will climb over a mountain of bodies to achieve his aim. Like the Empress, the Emperor card also varies quite a bit from its depiction in Cyberpunk. It shows an old man sitting on a ram-themed throne. He holds a scepter in one hand and a globe in the other. The Emperor is most often associated with authority, structure, paternity, and domination. 
This is probably the easiest tarot card to decipher. The Emperor has to represent Saburo Arasaka. Saburo is quite literally known as the Emperor. He is the patriarch of the Arasaka Corporation and has been since the 1960s. Saburo has a thirst for domination. It is because of his actions that Arasaka is one of the most influential megacorporations in the entire world, having a ton of political and economic sway. He's the personification of authority and power within Night City. Even in death, Saburo's authority cannot be diminished, as one of the endings for the game sees V help Saburo's Engram take over his son's, Yuarnobu's, body. Saburo Arasaka is the Emperor. And there's also some nice contrast between him and Rogue, the Empress. You can't, uh, can't forget to mention that. The Hierophant. Real quick, a Hierophant is an ancient Greek priest whose job is to interpret sacred mysteries. It's okay, I didn't know that either. Anywho, the number 5 card is the Hierophant. It can be found by the Japan Town Waterfront. This is another pretty creepy piece of graffiti. To be fair though, anything with red eyes typically gives off a sort of despair vibe. See the Terminator for reference. Anywho, the Hierophant shows what appears to be a borged out punk, hovering with wires and gizmos protruding from his head and backside. He holds a key-like staff, and on the center of his torso are two crossed keys, with their teeth pointing upwards. The in-game journal entry reads, The Hierophant symbolizes a respect for tradition. It represents one who tries to maintain the established order, even though their very character is shaped by it. The Hierophant places his faith in institutions, for the alternative is pure chaos. Only by placing his faith in order can he draw strength. The tarot card for the Hierophant is quite similar to Cyberpunk's version. It shows a robe-clad priest holding a key-like staff, and below him are the same two crossed keys. The Hierophant is often associated with tradition, conformity, institutions, and order. Stick to the status quo. This might be a bit controversial, but I think that the Hierophant represents Goro Takamura. Goro was the bodyguard to Saburo who was fiercely loyal to the Arasaka family. He fits in an established hierarchy of the Arasaka Corporation, his role defined by the family. His way of life and means of living are reliant on the Arasaka power structure, and when his life is turned on its head, being accused of assassinating Saburo, Takamura naively keeps his faith in the Arasaka institution, believing that by telling Hanako the truth about her father's death, all will turn out right for him. This proves false, as Hanako would refuse to listen. From here, the fate of Takamura is dependent on the actions of V. The Lovers Numbered 6 is the Lovers card. It can be found tagged to the backside of the Silver Pixel Cloud Drive-In Theater. The graffiti shows two skeletons swapping spit, giving each other a little tongue action. But there's more to that. The cyberpunk aesthetic is present with the bones of the skeleton being held together by screws. Cyberware can be seen wired onto the skulls. The top skeleton has the image of a snake, while the bottom skeleton shows a tree on fire. The in-game journal reads, The Lovers is the card of dichotomies. It points to the contradictions that clash within each of us and of the challenge of striking a balance between extremes. The Lovers is also the card of dilemmas, like the fool who stands at the crossroads, unable to make his choice. The tarot card for Lovers is surprisingly similar. Sure, there is no tongue kissing and the posing is a bit different, but it shows two naked people, one who has some snakes next to them, and the other with a tree on fire. In divination readings, while the Lovers does represent what you'd expect, love, attraction, beauty, it more notably represents choice and decisions. As for in-game, while it is quite easy to point and say, hey, the lovers represents Rogue and Johnny's relationship. It's found in the spot where they go on their date. 
I think that the tarot card's meaning actually goes deeper than that. On a surface level, yeah, the lovers are Rogue and Johnny, sure. But I think a better representation of the lovers is actually Johnny and V. I mean, the achievement for stealing the relic and inserting Johnny's consciousness into V's body is called The Lovers. The game is making it quite clear with that one. But there's more. Let's go back to the first line of the journal entry for the card. The Lovers is the card of dichotomies. It's the card about two contrasting things. I think those two things are Johnny and V. And the graffiti imagery backs it up too. V lives in the physical world, Johnny is stuck living as an engram. As mentioned before, the physical and otherworldly world is often represented by above and below. The person in the physical world, V, would be the bottom skeleton, while the person living in the spiritual world or cyber or otherworldly world, Johnny, would be the top skeleton. V dreams of being a Night City legend, looking upwards towards their goal, while Johnny already is one, being at the top. V is just doing their best to survive, surrounded by fires, while Johnny wants to take down Arasaka, potentially cutting the head off the snake. Both spend time fighting for control of V's body, as shown through the intertwining tongues. They contrast one another. The journal entry goes on to also mention that the lover's card is the card of dilemmas, unable to make his choice. I think this further emphasizes the connection between the lovers and Johnny and V. It's at this point in the story that the player's opinion of Johnny might start to sway. Up until this point, he's been quite a bit of a jackass, but going on the date with Rogue humanizes him and evokes some sympathy for the old rocker boy. Is this the quest that sways the player to choosing the ending where Johnny takes full control? It just might be. I think the lovers is supposed to represent Johnny and V. Let me know what you think. The Chariot The number 7 card in the Rider Waite Tarot deck is the Chariot. It can be found near Tom's Diner. The graffiti shows a ghoulish figure in purple riding on a motorcycle. The journal entry for the Chariot reads, The Chariot is always charging ahead despite being pulled by its steeds in opposite directions. The rider who steers it constantly reigns in the light and dark sides of the soul with the help of reason. To ride in the chariot is to experience highs and lows, ups and downs. The graffiti doesn't really match the tarot card at all. The tarot card shows a figure sitting atop a chariot being pulled by two sphinxes, one black and one white. In fortune tellings, the chariot is usually associated with willpower, success, determination, and action. The chariot's interpretation in cyberpunk is definitely one of the harder ones to decipher. I've seen some people interpret it as the relationship between Johnny and V, but I'd like to simplify it a bit. I think the chariot is supposed to be the physical body of V. The journal entry notes that the chariot always moves forward despite being pulled in opposite directions by its steeds. The steeds in this scenario would be V and Johnny. They want different things and compete with each other over control of the physical body, over control of the chariot. I suppose in this interpretation, the rider of the chariot would be the player. It would be you and me. It's a bit meta in that sense. V and Johnny can try and pull the chariot, V's body, in the direction that they so desire. But it is the rider, us, that ultimately makes the decision on where to go. Sure, it's a bit out there, but that's what I think. Let me know what you've got. Strength The next tarot card is Strength. It is number 8 and can be found in the rail freight yard where V first meets Pan Am. The entire image for the graffiti is taken up by the upper torso and head of a hooded woman. Her faceplate is removed, revealing a mess of mechanical parts. Tattooed on the woman's chest is the image of a woman trying to pry open the jaws of what appears to be a lion. The in-game journal entry reads, Strength is the card of resilience. It is associated with determination, bravery, and internal struggle. One must have dedication in order to overcome obstacles and reach one's goal. 
Strength is about physical prowess and spiritual fortitude, the power that must be unleashed to achieve the impossible. The kind of neat part of the strength graffiti is that it hides the Rider Waite tarot card art inside of it. The tattoo on the woman's chest is essentially depicting the strength card. The card shows a woman in white with her hands on the jaws of a lion. It should come to no one's surprise that strength most often represents strength. In addition to the obvious, it's also associated with courage, influence, and compassion. The idea is that by being able to calmly tame what is typically a ferocious animal, the woman is showing inner strength and resilience. In game, I think strength is supposed to represent Pan Am. One, the art is located near the area where you first meet her. Two, the figure on the graffiti is a woman and with the limited view we have, she sorta of resembles a nomad. Three, more importantly, the in-game journal description and real-life tarot interpretation suit Pan Am's journey quite nicely. The strength card is about determination, bravery, and internal struggle. Pan Am struggles with her identity as a nomad after leaving the clan shortly before the events of the game. She shows through her antics as a merc that she is fiercely determined, like when she wants to get her stolen items and truck back from Nash. And it's through meeting V that Pan Am is able to eventually tame the beast that is the Aldecaldo's nomad tribe and rejoin once again. The Hermit Number 9 in the deck is the Hermit. It can be found near the Pacifica Serenity Bible Church. The graffiti depicts a robed figure holding a staff in one hand and a lantern of sorts in the other. They're standing on a ledge, looking slightly down. They appear to be wearing some sort of gas mask, with the tube going down from their face into their waistband. The in-game journal entry reads, The Hermit is a card of self-imposed isolation. It represents an escape from the hustle and bustle of the city, a turning away from constant newness toward ye old ways. For the Hermit, solitude is the road to sublime, a road that is taken not with great bounds and strides, but with small concentrated steps. The Rider Waite art for the Hermit Tarot card is strikingly similar. It shows an old man in robes, holding a staff and lantern. He's perched atop a summit, looking downwards. The Hermit is most often associated with introspection, isolation, and inner guidance. I think the obvious in-game representation is that the Hermit is supposed to represent Alt Cunningham. You get an achievement called the Hermit after meeting with her, and it's found near the spot where you commune with her during the transmission quest. And I think it makes some sense. By the start of Cyberpunk 2077, Alt's physical body and even consciousness is long dead. Rather, only an engram of her exists on the net, isolated from the rest of the physical world. But it could also represent the Voodoo Boys, a gang of netrunners who live on the outskirts of society. Let me know. Wheel of Fortune The tenth and midway point for the Major Arcana is the Wheel of Fortune card. It can be found at the Sunset Motel. The graffiti art depicts a deceased person riddled with bullet holes. They are leaning against a wall with the namesake Wheel of Fortune etched into it. It is an eight-spoke wheel with various alchemical symbols at each of the cardinal directions. Water, earth, air, and fire. Next to the figure is a briefcase, with cards laying about. Definitely one of the more graphic graffitis in the game. The journal entry reads, The Wheel of Fortune means that change is coming. One's destiny could turn out for the better or the worse. Yet it also bears the promise of new possibilities. The wheel reminds us that nobody remains at the top forever, but also that not every situation is hopeless. The tarot card for the Wheel of Fortune is mostly taken up by the Wheel of Fortune. Around the dial are various creatures, a lion, ox, human, and eagle. These are said to represent the four evangelists, the authors attributed with the creation of the four canonical gospel accounts, a snake, sphinx, and what appears to be the Egyptian god Anubis, surround the wheel as well. Divination readings with the Wheel of Fortune are often associated with destiny, fortune, and luck. 
Within Cyberpunk, I think the Wheel of Fortune represents V's conversation with Anders Hellman. After all, like the Hermit and Lover's card, you get an achievement called Wheel of Fortune after interrogating Anders. The wheel can represent a change of fortune, good or bad, and up until the meeting with Anders, V is in high hopes about being able to remove the relic from her head. It's only after speaking with the former Arasaka bioengineer that it's revealed that V will be unable to survive if the relic is removed. It's in this moment that V's destiny is altered entirely. While the player can still make it so that V is only concerned with removing the relic and surviving, other pathways start to open up, leading the player to some of the other endings. No longer is their primary goal finding a way to remove the relic and live. Just like the journal entry said, not every situation is hopeless. Justice Justice is the number 11 card. It can be found near the Electric Corporation power plant where V and Judy go to save Evelyn. The graffiti depicts a figure with their back turned to the viewer. On the back of the figure are skeletal themed scales of justice, equally balanced. In the figure's right hand is a sword. Stemming from the back of their head are wires and cables, reaffirming the cyberpunk aesthetic. The in-game journal reads, Justice is the card of conflict resolution. It proclaims the need for order, to see through lies and deceit, and a return to the natural state of affairs. Justice implies a just sentence, but also due process. The tarot card for justice shows a figure in a red robe, sitting on a throne. In one hand is a sword, and in the other are the scales of justice. Justice is most often associated with justice, of course, but also fairness, truth, and law. This is probably one of the trickiest tarot cards to interpret. Based on where the graffiti is found, I think justice is meant to represent the aforementioned mission, Disaster Piece. It is through attacking the scavenger outpost that V dishes out some Night City justice on Evelyn's behalf. Alternatively, the journal mentions justice as a need to see through lies and deceit. The brain dances that Judy extracts from Evelyn after saving her reveals Evelyn's greater role in the heist that got V into the predicament that they're currently in. Prior to the heist, Evelyn was hired by the Voodoo Boys to record a BD of Yorinobu's penthouse, thus kicking off the events of the first act. This information gives V a new lead on their journey, as heading to Pacifica becomes the next task on their to-do list. It is definitely one of the harder cards to interpret. Let me know what you think. The Hanged Man The Hanged Man is the 12th card in the Major Arcana. It can be found near Johnny Silverhand's grave in the Northern Oil Fields. The graffiti shows an upside-down figure suspended by his legs with some cables. Behind him, some onlookers with a singular cybernetic eye are watching the scene. The in-game journal reads, The hanged man is the card of sacrifice. It says that a price must be paid in order to achieve enlightenment. The hanged man's forsakenness opens the path for rebirth into a new life, though this path is wrought with pain suspended in time and ultimately ends in death. I think that paints a pretty clear picture for what the hanged man is referring to. Anyway, the Hanged Man card shows a man hanging upside down by one foot. More often than not, the Hanged Man represents wisdom, trials, sacrifice, and prophecy. In-game, due to its location and the journal, I think the Hanged Man is Johnny Silverhand. But more specifically, the physical Johnny Silverhand, before his death in 2023. The journal mentions that the Hanged Man is the card of sacrifice. Johnny dies in the 2023 Arasaka Tower attack, where, in one account of events, he takes on Adam Smasher in order to buy time for the rest of his team to escape. The journal then goes on to say that a price must be paid in order to achieve enlightenment. Johnny attains a sort of post-physical existence, or enlightenment, through becoming an engram on the relic. It's obviously not the best of times, but he does live beyond his human shell. It then says a path for rebirth is opened. 
This happens when V puts the relic into their head. It opens a new path for Johnny to try and get a new life. And then the entry closes mentioning that this new life is wrought with pain and ultimately ends in death. Johnny's journey with V is anything but smooth sailing, and in many of the endings it does result in the quote-unquote second death of Johnny Silverhand. I know there are some alternative takes on the hanged man, so let me know yours. Death Death is the 13th card in the Major Arcana. It can be found near the Ember's nightclub where the final act begins. Death shows a robotic figure with a skeletal face. They are wearing samurai style armor and holding a sword in their right hand. The journal entry for it reads, Death is the card of becoming. It signifies an imminent and difficult transition, the conclusion of one phase of life and the beginning of another. Inevitably, something gets lost during the transformation, but something else will rise and take its place. The death card in the Rider Weight deck is strikingly similar. It shows a skeleton adorned in black armor, representing the Grim Reaper, riding on a pale white horse. All around him are dead or dying people from all walks of life. Men, women, children, royalty, bishops, and commoners. In tarot readings, death doesn't always mean like straight up death, but rather an end. Other interpretations are the expected things, death, mortality, destruction, and corruption. This is another example showing that not all tarot cards are meant to represent people. In this case, death represents the game's point of no return. It's before entering the embers that the game prompts you to save and finish up any other business you may have with Night City, as you will not be able to continue playing the game after beating it. Death represents the beginning of the end of the game. The journal is not subtle with it at all, quite clearly referring to the end game. Temperance Now we're getting into the cards that relate to the game's actual endings. So, tons of spoilers here if there weren't any already. Temperance is card number 14. It can be found near the Columbarium. The graffiti shows a cyborg sitting down. On his tank top is a black triangle with a white square. At his feet is an unconscious person. The pair are connected to each other through what seems to be a blood transfusion. The journal entry reads, Temperance is the card of balance. It may symbolize self-restraint or the gradual shift towards a more mature state of equilibrium. Temperance is associated with being in control of oneself as well as the desire to achieve inner peace. The Rider Weight card depicts an angel pouring one cup of liquid into another, matching the same motif of the blood transfusion, the sharing of fluids. On the chest of the angel is the same triangle with a square symbol, meant to represent the shared spiritual and physical world. The triangle represents the spirit, while the corners of the square represent the four classical elements. Temperance is most often associated with balance, patience, and purpose. Now while I don't personally like the temperance ending all too much, I think the temperance description fits quite beautifully into the game. The journal entry mentions temperance being about finding inner peace and self-acceptance. It is through this ending that V comes to terms with her own mortality, accepts Johnny as the true inhabitant of their body, and crosses the bridge into cyberspace forever. After fighting against fate for so long, they've since come to accept it. The Devil Card number 15 is the Devil. It is obtained after completing the Devil ending and can be seen when V breaks the Rubik's Cube in half during the Where Is My Mind quest. The image shows what appears to be a member of Maelstrom, sporting a crazed smile. The journal entry reads, The Devil is addiction, craving, and passion. He brings fame and fortune, but at the price of losing oneself to a world of material distractions. The devil lures unsuspecting souls into traps, but always grants them a choice. One can try their luck and take him up on his offer, but one should always know when to call quits. The tarot card for the devil depicts a creature similar to the satanic Baphomet. 
a reversed pentagram is on his forehead, and two naked demons are chained to the pedestal that he's perched on. Yeah, not a whole lot of similarities to the cyberpunk version at all really. The devil is most often associated with violence, evil, and force. Obviously, the devil is meant to represent the devil ending. That is the ending where you side with Arasaka, accepting the shady and not-so-trustworthy Megacorp's help dealing with the relic. The journal entry mentions that the devil is addiction. This would be V's desperate desire to live. It states that it lures souls into traps, but always gives them a choice. This would be the deal that Hanako brokered with V and the secure your soul contract that Arasaka offered them. It goes on to say that one can try their luck and take the devil up on their offer, which V does, but then mentions that one should always know when to call it quits, which if V does the devil ending, they don't end up calling it quits, giving their engram to the corpse. The Tower The next card, number 16, is the Tower. It can be found at the Arasaka Memorial. The graffiti depicts a purple tower with a streak of lightning crossing through the center of the image. The journal entry reads, The tower is an omen of radical change, chaos, and destruction. The lightning striking the tower signifies a return to the old order that lies buried under the ruins, and a new order that will rise from it. It is a symbol of tragedy, apocalypse, and self-destruction. The art on the tarot card keeps the main image the same, a tower with a streak of lightning striking across it. It is most often associated with deception, misery, and ruin. As for the meaning, the tower is quite literal. The tower represents the old Arasaka towers that were destroyed in the fourth corporate war. After all, that is where the graffiti is found, in the ruins of the towers. The tower represents radical change, chaos, and destruction, all things that happened during the Night City Holocaust. What rose in the aftermath of the tower bombing was a new order of Arasaka. While they were defeated in the Fourth Corporate War, after time they managed to reclaim their spot as one of the most powerful and influential corporations in not only Night City, but also the rest of the world. The Star the star is the 17th card in the Major Arcana. It is found near the solar arrays in the Badlands. The graffiti shows a purple woman dancing as an audience watches. The journal entry reads, The star is the card of hope. In the darkness of nights, there is a light that shines the path to home. The star is inspiration, motivation, and gives us strength to move forward. The star tarot card shows a naked woman kneeling by some water. Above her head is an eight-pointed star. The star is often associated with hope. The star is meant to represent its eponymous ending, the one where V leaves Night City with the Aldecaldos. In my opinion, this is one of the two best endings for the game. It sees V grow from a Night City no-name who dreamed of making it big, to someone who just wants to spend the last of their days with the people that they love with family. Too often V has witnessed Night City chew up and discard people who dreamed of a better life. Jackie, Evelyn, Johnny, and many more. Instead of joining this Night City meat grinder, they choose to do something that will surely bring them happiness for the rest of their days, however many that is. In the bleakest of situations, the Aldecaldos offer a home to the notorious Merc sparking a glimmer of hope. The Moon Continuing the celestial theme, the moon is the 18th card. It can be found near the Arasaka estate. The graffiti shows a pair of wolves howling at the moon. Around them is what appears to be a scrapyard of cyberware and skeletons. A cityscape is in the background. The journal entry reads, The moon reminds us all that reality is not always what it seems at first glance. In a world of appearances and illusions, the best course is often charted by one's own intuition. The moon is also the card of dreams, desires, and of course, sleep, death's nightly ritual. The tarot card shares a similar image, a pair of wolves or dogs howling at the moon. Divination readings often associate the moon with hidden enemies, mystery, and deception. 
reality is not always what it seems. Based on where it is found, the moon is definitely hinting at the true motivations of Yorinobu Arasaka. Throughout much of the game, Yorinobu is painted as the primary antagonist. After all, he killed his own father and had the blame put on someone else. However, it is learned through helping Hanako and the devil ending that Yorinobu's true plan is revealed. The heir to the Arasaka throne wanted to finish what Johnny Silverhand had started. He wanted to bring an end to his father's legacy and Arasaka. Much like reality, Yorinobu is not what he seems. The Sun The last of the celestial cards is the Sun. It is the 19th major arcana card and can be found near V's eventual penthouse in the Path of Glory quest. The graffiti shows a cowgirl in white sitting atop a golden motorcycle. Behind her is a planet, or more likely, the sun, with some space stations floating about. The journal entry reads, The sun symbolizes success. It is a card of freedom, renewal, and a bright future that lies ahead. The sun also represents truth, for its light will always pull back the curtain of shadow that hides the world's secret. It also represents greatness and splendor. The sun tarot card shows an infant riding a white horse with a sun in the background. It's kinda similar. The card is generally associated with positive things, happiness, and fortune. The sun represents the second of the two best endings in my opinion. Dexter Deshawn asks you in the first act, would you rather live in peace as Mr. Nobody, or go down for all times in a blaze of glory? The entirety of the game's endings can be summed up with this question. The sun ending represents the latter, going out in a blaze of glory. It's through this ending that V succeeds where many have failed. They keep their promise to Jackie and become a Night City legend. They are not chewed up and spat out like so many before them. They manage to kick Night City's ass and choose to go out on their own terms. It's probably my favorite ending for the game. There's just something about making the most of what you have and achieving what you always wanted to do that just resonates with me. Just like the star ending, this version of V isn't scared of dying and just wants to spend how many ever days they have left doing what they want to do. In this case, it's sticking true to what V and Jackie wanted to do from the very start of the game and become a legend of the afterlife. Judgment The penultimate major arcana card is Judgment. It can be found just before the entrance to Mikoshi in the Arasaka Tower, where you fight Adam Smasher. The graffiti depicts a skeletal trumpeter beckoning various nude figures from a series of graves. Behind them are a pair of eyes, and what looks like to be a tooth-filled maw. The journal entry reads, Judgment is the card of renewal. The angel blowing into the horn heralds resurrection and liberation. This card foretells an important change that will result in healing or fulfillment. It's a symbol of self-worth. The tarot card depicts much of the same. However, instead of a skeletal figure playing the trumpet, it is an angel. Judgment is often associated with judgment, of course, but also rebirth, karma, and a second chance. As judgment can only be found in the endings where V attacks Arasaka Tower, meaning not the devil ending, I think it's meant to represent the decision V makes regarding who will take control of their body. One of V or Johnny will be rebirthed, taking sole ownership of V's physical form. The World and the final card in the Major Arcana, number 21, is the World. It is found on the rooftop of Misty's Esoterica, just before V makes their final decision about which ending to take. The graffiti shows a silhouette of a person with a yellow cybernetic eye. Extending from this are sprawling city streets, buildings, symbolizing the card's name, the World. The journal entry reads, the world lies at the end of the fool's long and winding journey. Wiser and more world-weary than he was when he started out, the fool faces a moment of reckoning. Some of us accept where our journey has led us, while others embark on a new challenge. One thing in this world is certain, 
you can't have it all. The card shows a naked woman inside of a wreath and holding a white baton in each hand. In the four corners of the card are the creature symbols of the four evangelists that we've seen before. The world is most often associated with success, voyage, and a change of place. In terms of the game, the world represents the end of it. V's journey has come to an end. They now face a moment of reckoning, the ending decision that they will make. I think it then takes on a more meta approach. The journal mentions that some will accept the outcome of their journey, meaning the player, you and me, liked the ending that they got and will take a break from the game. And then it says that others will embark on a new challenge, starting a new save and playing through V's journey all over again. And thus wraps up our exploration and analysis of the major arcana tarot cards that can be found across Night City. Each card represents a major player or moment within the game's expansive world and narrative. From the fool all the way to the world, the story of Cyberpunk 2077 neatly fits into a series of 22 tarot cards. That's all from me today, folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. If you want more cyberpunk videos, let me know. Join the Discord. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. Now, I may not be good with names, but I do have quite a talent for faces. Where have I seen yours before? On the TV? Very unlikely. <laughs> but of course! Hideshi Hino! The man, the legend, in the flesh! Oh, you're just in time. Do you know who this is? Hideshi Hino, the late night comedy host. He was brilliant before he fell off the wagon. Can you still do your famous, better bugger up? No. Come on, you don't forget a thing like that. Just once, please. V, we should go in now. Hideshi, don't leave this poor guy hanging. This is not the best time, truly. Come on! I haven't heard it in years! Oh. Beta Bakurap! Wow. Hino-san, what happened to you? I do not know. I do not recognize myself. <laughs>